was your most memorable experience serving as president? My most memorable experience of being president was the fact that it was virtual. And I remember at the ASDS meeting 2023, well, the ASDS meeting when I was president, I introduced the meeting from Boston. And that was a unique experience to have uplifting and sobering at the same time. I wanted to see everyone. I wanted to uh, get together with everyone. However, at that point, it wasn't really possible. So it was disappointing not to be with people. But what I found really extraordinary was our attendance actually went up. And that was a way for us to connect at a time when it was harder to connect with people. So I actually found it rewarding. It was an important time for us to come together and educate each other and keep the mission of the ASDS. We very much kept things intact and emerged stronger as a society. What were the issues facing the society at the time? The issues that were facing the society at that time, a lot of them were really COVID. Had to get resources to practices. Uh, there were supply chain issues. There were issues in terms of what PPE people could obtain or use. There was skepticism about vaccines and people wondering whether or not they could safely treat patients with soft tissue fillers. And the society really got on top of that. There was misinformation going around about dangers doing botulinum toxins and COVID vaccines that turn out not to be true. So I think our most important issues were just setting the record straight on things that we were doing. The ability to practice our own practice was shut down for three months by the state of Massachusetts because we were doing aesthetics at the same time they're allowing spas to be open for a short period. So the society was very strong and advocated very strongly for its membership and enabled us to treat our patients in a safe and effective way. What were the most significant innovations in dermatology at the time? You know, there are always a lot of different innovations in the way we do um, toxins and fillers. What was emerging at that time was something called tissue microcoring, and that's something that came out of our department and the Department of Plastic Surgery at Massachusetts General Hospital. And that was the ability to take microcores from the skin to get tightening and softening of lines. And that was kind of emerging at that time. And that was an innovation that was important for our practice and one that's kind of spread to other dermatology practices and other core specialties. Who was your most memorable patient and why? You know, I've had a lot of memorable patients. I think the one that for me was most memorable was a woman who was burned by a uh, plastic surgeon locally for doing CO2 resurfacing incorrectly. And if you looked at the record, there were multiple missteps along the way. And our job, she actually had contracture scars. She wasn't able to mobilize her ability to open her mouth. And our job was to use lasers, not only to improve her aesthetically, but to improve her function day to day. She had other uh, big comorbidities, and this was something that we actually got better. And at a time where she really um, needed help, our skills as laser surgeons made a big difference in her day to day functioning in her life. And for me, that was special because she was very grateful about it. And it was a learning process for me in terms of things that we could do to really touch on people's lives. And looking back at your career, is there anything you would change or do differently? You know, you would think I was a lawyer for three years, and then I did it a year pre-med, and then I went to medical school. And you might think that you'd say, well, maybe I shouldn't have been a lawyer. And, and I never think that. I don't want to be a lawyer again. I don't want to practice law. However, the experience that I gained from that helps me every day as a physician. I think an attention to detail, an ability to see legal and administrative issues have all helped me as a physician, as well as someone who's been involved in issues within our field and administrative issues within our department. So strangely enough, I think that seven year detour of going to law school and uh, being an attorney was beneficial. And the only surprising thing is that I didn't regret that time because I think ultimately it brought me to where I am now and I love what I do and I look forward to doing it every day. What advice would you give to today's young dermatologic surgeons? The strongest piece of advice I would give to younger dermatologic surgeons is to double down on your training, double down on your knowledge base. We are only the experts in the health and beauty of the skin to the extent that we actually show that we're the experts. We need to provide better soft tissue filler treatments, better botulinum treatments, better laser treatments, better surgical results, because if we don't, we have no business saying that we are any better. Now, because of our training and because of the people who have set up a lot of this field, we have the unique ability to do that. 
but there are no shortcuts to working hard. So the training is very important, working hard is crucial, and then if you want to separate yourself from the vast masses of people that are doing aesthetics and many spas and other venues, just be better than them. And the way to do that is to train hard, to learn, and to be a lifelong student. That's how you're going to do well early in your career and as you go on in your career. And if you think there are shortcuts, you may be in for a rude awakening. So continue to work hard. What are your predictions for the future as a specialty? The, the one thing I would say about the future of the specialty is, is that it's going to continue to change. Obviously, AI and um, other technologies are going to play a big role in that. And I think that we're going to have treatments that have shorter downtime, that are more tailored to provide results. And I think as we go farther and farther into the future, technologies that are going to be on our phones to create those results. Having said that, no one's really successfully predicted what's going to happen 10 or 15 years in the future in our field. And uh, so you have to kind of take with a grain of salt, but I think that's where we're headed. What advice do you have for ASDS leadership in serving its membership in the future? I think the biggest uh, piece of advice I give for ASDS leadership is to listen to the membership. Always try and get feedback from the membership and remember who you represent. When you're in the uh, boardroom and you're making tough decisions, people voted for you to make these decisions because they had inherent trust in your abilities to make those judgments but but talk to members listen to them and when you're in the boardroom listen to to the other members on the board there, there's so many good smart people there people have the right motivation so look at as look at it as a collegial opportunity to broaden our field listen to your colleagues listen to your fellow board members and then if you're not sure about something just think about what's best for our field